We all dream of finding long-lost treasure, but some treasure doesn't just bring its finder riches. Some treasure comes with a dark twist, because some treasure is cursed. These are 20 cursed treasures that ended lives. Number 20. Curse of the Aztec God Yes, this is the made-up story from the Pirates of the Caribbean. The treasure of Cortez was a stone chest containing 882 pieces of Aztec gold. The heathen gods are said to have hexed the treasure with dark magic as vengeance for Cortez's greed. The curse stated that any mortal who removed a piece of gold from the chest would be punished for all of eternity, so it's pretty stern stuff then. Apparently, the curse could only be lifted by returning all the pieces of the Aztec gold to the stone chest and following that up with a payment in blood. The story, when first told to all of those naughty pirates and Captain Barbosa's crew, was met with a good deal of hilarity and incredulity. And by the time they learned that it was indeed true, they were all already cursed. Such fun. Who doesn't like a good swashbuckle every now and then? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Curse of King Tut One of the more famously cursed ancient treasures of all times was that of the Tomb of Tutankhamun. Discovered on November 4th of 1922 by a team of archaeologists led by Howard Carter, the long-lost tomb of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh had been left undisturbed for almost 3,000 years. When the tomb was opened and entered by Carter and his team, rumors began to circulate that the curse of the pharaoh would befall all who disturbed the boy king's resting place. Now, what truth could there have been in this curse? Well, as it happens, there was some sudden deaths reported amongst those involved in the opening of the tomb, and this has further fueled the legend of King Tut's curse. Lord Carnarvon, the guy who had financed Carter's expedition to seek out treasures and excavate in the Valley of the Kings, met an untimely end in March of 1923. His death was long considered mysterious, but the thing that isn't reported is that he had suffered from poor health for many years and appears to have died from malaria or something similar after he arrived in Egypt. Not so much evidence of a curse. Then there were other catastrophes that befell people involved in the excavation. Howard Carter gave his friend Sir Bruce Ingham a paperweight which contained a mummified hand and then this unfortunate chap's house burned down. He tried to rebuild and it was immediately flooded. An American financier visited the tomb in 1923 only to fall sick immediately afterwards and then died a few months later. Another archaeologist was so struck with fear of the mummy's curse that was offing people all around him that he took his own life, allegedly citing the curse as his reason. Over and over again, countless adjacent individuals and their families suffered early or violent deaths, but Carter, the man who had first opened the tomb, was spared. He lived to the ripe old age of 64 and then died of cancer. There's a theory that Carter himself actually began the rumor of the curse of the pharaoh, and it seems that in order to control the media frenzy around the discovery, he concocted the story to keep the hordes at bay. But that's just what people covering up an evil supernatural curse would say now, isn't it? Number 18. The Hope Diamond it seems as though fabricating a tale of a mysterious curse is a great publicity stunt that can likely as not increase interest and as a result the value of whatever you're promoting. The Hope Diamond may be such a cursed object, although perhaps fabricating the story of a curse is sometimes enough to invoke one to possess your thing. Can it be only coincidence that diamonds are so often associated with the violence and evil? The Hope Diamond has been kicking around fancy circles for hundreds of years, making its way through the hands of kings for a couple of hundred before landing in the care of Henry Philip Hope, Diamond Collector. That's right, Columbo. That's how it got its name. Then a bunch of ill-conceived financial decisions would lead the Hope Diamond to eventually being put up for sale and still not being able to save the erstwhile owners from bankruptcy. This is basically where the story of the curse would originate. The financial pages of the 
New York Times in the year 1908 posited the idea and, as is often the way, other newspapers picked up on the story and elaborated somewhat. So the curse grew into something which could not only bring about financial doom, but also divorce, and then it was even blamed for the executions of Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette. Obviously, having a dangerous curse does nothing for the monetary value of your diamond, and the hope diamond would be sold at a bargain price to diamond dealers. Pierre Cartier really leaned into the story of the hope diamond and managed to imbue it with a sense of romance and mystery, along with its dangerous curse. The next owners were one of the richest families in America, and they were not immune to the curse. Their 10-year-old son would be killed when he was hit by a car, and the diamond was eventually pawned by the family to raise funds to hire a private investigator to find the Lindbergh baby's kidnappers. This diamond did the rounds for decades. More tragedies would take place until eventually it was given to the Smithsonian. This was not without controversy, as it would then be owned by America. People feared that it would curse the entire country. This was the 1950s, and well, nothing bad at all has happened since then, right? Number 17. The Lost Dutchman Gold Mine A tale from the American West with all the good stuff, gold and curses, Oh, my favorite! The legend of the Lost Dutchman Mine has been told again and again throughout the generations for over 120 years. It's a tantalizing story, but also a dangerous one. It has all those hallmarks of a classic mystery. There are many tales throughout time of great riches that are protected by a curse or that remain just out of reach for all who attempt to find them. And the search for this mythical gold mine became one man's obsession to the point that it literally killed him dead. Jesse Capon was fixated on finding his fortune in the remote and dangerous-sounding Superstition Mountains of Arizona, and he did indeed meet his fate. But regrettably, that did not involve any gold. The poor unfortunate soul died whilst seeking his fortune, and then his body was not found for three years. Ew. Number 16. Cahuenga Pass this was a stretch of trail that was followed by early Californian explorers and was then incorporated into El Camino Real, which was the north-south route through colonial California. But the story of its curse began in 1864, when a fugitive by the name of Marino alleged to have buried a small fortune alongside the trail. The treasure, which he's believed to have placed there, included gold, diamonds, and pearls, amongst other precious artifacts. But he stole it from an ill-fated group of agents that had set out to use it to buy guns to fight against the monarchy in Mexico. In a complicated tale of dangerous deeds and sudden and mysterious deaths, it seemed as though almost everyone who came into contact with the treasure met an untimely end. So it happened that Marino had a bad dream and felt that the treasure was indeed cursed, so he buried it to try and escape the jinx. He told a friend about the treasure, but then he died suddenly anyways. His friend then headed out to retrieve the loot, but guess what? Yes, he collapsed and died. And on and on it all went. Everyone who came close to the treasure or even tried to find it either died unexpectedly or ran away in fear when they heard of the curse. Then in 1939, a big team would head out to perform a large dig of the area. But after 24 days and the movement of over 100 tons of earth, they still had nothing. Again, people died, so no more permits were allowed until 1974 when a one-day permit was granted to William W. Boyle. He found no treasure, but by some stroke of remarkable fortune, he actually lived to tell the tale. Number 15. The Cursed Dollars The reason that people talk of the cursed dollar is a bunch of financial jargon and complicated import and export guff that basically means that because the United States dollar is the global money, it's also less profitable somehow for Americans. Sounds like a lot of baloney to be fair. Anyway, if you were to look at the stuff on the planet that had likely ended more lives than anything else ever, would it actually be money? Could be perhaps in close competition with disease and famine. But you know, the almighty dollar would be right up there as the cause of poverty, war, and murder. So perhaps, although this is a distinctly abstract concept, the cursed dollar is the most cursed of all the treasure that people have ever suffered and died for. What do you think? 
Do you fancy getting philosophical in the comments, or shall we just head on to the next topic? Number 14. The Oak Island Treasure the pursuit of lost treasure is an ages-old interest, and just because we live in these modern times with all those lavish technological advancements and tools to help us search for such things, there's still an inherent romance in the hunt for buried treasure. And so, that explains the enduring popularity of a television series in which the main premise is the hunt for cursed treasure. The History Channel reality show, The Curse of Oak Island, has been running since 2014. It follows the exploit of a couple of brothers from Michigan named Marty and Rick Lagina as they attempt to find and retrieve the rumored lost treasure that's believed to be buried on Oak Island in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. The treasure is rumored to be worth 2 million British pounds, but it is the unraveling of a mystery and the promise of hope that the show offers that keeps people interested in the seemingly endless quest. And that's just it really, isn't it? The pursuit of lost things is part of the charm rather than the total potential treasure. People just love a mystery after all. Number 13, Koh Nor Diamond. The dangerous diamond has been afflicted with a curse, but this one is slightly different. It only affects men. Who knew curses were so choosy? The 186 karat Kohinoor diamond belonged to India before it was looted by the British during all that colonizing that they were so fond of perpetrating. And to this day, the diamond sits in the Tower of London in the UK amongst the crown jewels. The thing is though, this is no ordinary big old diamond. It is cursed and has has one of the more murky histories amongst big shiny rocks. Research into its history shows that throughout time, the owners of the diamond have suffered greatly in a variety of horrific and imaginative ways. There are stories of them being blinded, tortured to death, burned in oil, crowned with molten lead, and assassinated. And even those who have simply found themselves in close proximity to the diamond have suffered dreadful fates. When the diamond traveled across the sea from India to England, the ship it was carried by, the HMS Medea, was struck down by a cholera epidemic and slung about by unseasonably large storms. It's reckoned, though, that according to folklore, he who owns this diamond will own the world but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or woman can wear it with impunity. So there you go. Number 12, Charles Island. It is quite unfortunate to be a place that gets cursed, but to get cursed twice, you have to imagine that the place did something pretty dreadful. But this place was so flipping awful that it was cursed no fewer than three times. So that rather sucks now, doesn't it? The so-called Thrice Cursed Island is also known as Charles Island. It was originally cursed by a tribe of Native Americans when the land was stolen from them by European invaders. They cursed any building that was to be erected on the island and anyone who would inhabit it. The second curse came from a man named Captain Kidd. He hid his treasure here before being captured and cursed the land to protect the treasure from anyone who might want to find it. The third curse was placed by a group of sailors in the 1700s who, like Kidd, had buried their loot on the island. The thing is though, nobody's ever been able to unearth any of the lost treasure. Perhaps all those curses have had an effect after all. Number 11. The Curse of the Amber Room Back in the early 18th century, a German sculptor and a Danish amber craftsman designed and built a chamber that was entirely decorated with amber panels that were backed with gold leaf and mirrors. The result was such a spectacle that it was widely touted as one of the wonders of the world, if you like that sort of thing, and it was indeed very shiny, so lots of people enjoyed it. Anyways, this glowing amber room was originally created to be placed in a Prussian palace, but later found its way to Russia and the Catherine Palace when it was given as a gift to the Tsar from the Prussian king. It contained over six tons of amber and spanned 590 square feet, so it was quite the lavish gift. Long story short though, the Second World War would roll around and a couple of centuries later, the whole jolly lot was looted by the Nazis and put on display back in Germany. But then after the eventual collapse of Nazi Germany and their defeat in 1945, the whole thing again vanished. This time, nobody actually knows where it went or indeed who 
took it. There has since been a reconstruction of the room created at the Catherine Palace, which was officially opened in 2003, but the original, if it does survive, has never reappeared. Number 10. Wen Shi Huang's Tomb no doubt that when this army, known as the Terracotta Warriors, was first discovered, it likely made those that found them recoil in fear. It must have been a spooky sight indeed when, back in 1974, a couple of farmers found some pottery-like pieces on the ground and went to investigate further. This is when the tomb of China's first emperor would be uncovered, and as it was opened, it revealed an army of life-size sculptures. Oh, and it's also alleged to be cursed as well, so that's a fun one. Thousands of warriors and horses depicted in terracotta stand guard over the ancient tomb. They were all sporting full armor and stand in a particularly menacing battle formation facing the east, as this was the direction that the emperor's enemies would come from. Incredibly, each of the sculptures is an individual Individual, they have different facial features, hairstyles, and their ranks are made evident by their headgear. Each statue stands at around 6 feet tall, weighing up to 600 pounds. But the reason that archaeologists believe that these terracotta warriors were buried in this tomb is the ancient Chinese tradition of the afterlife. 3,000 years ago, the people of ancient China believed that when they died, they would exist in the afterlife, so the wealthy and the nobility of China wanted to take with them the things that they would need into the next world. That included their servants. Yes, there was a tradition of burying the still-living servants of royalty with them when they died. Horrifying and kind of impractical. So when the emperor died, I imagine it was likely to be really inconvenient if all the best soldiers also had to go with him. So the solution appears to have been to replace the living, breathing bodies with pottery depictions. No doubt, the army breathed a collective sigh of relief. Number 9. SS Central America Back in 1857, the SS Central America, a 280-foot steamer ship, would be loaded up with coins and newly cast gold bars from mints in San Francisco, and it set sail to New York. It was the height of the California gold rush, and everyone was having a lovely time, but that was to be short-lived when the ship ran into a hurricane. Although some passengers were rescued from the stricken vessel, 423 would perish in what was then the worst maritime disaster of all time. The ship and its treasure was lost to the deep. In the late 1980s, though, sonar equipment would be used to locate the treasure, and some of it was actually recovered. This didn't go entirely without a hitch, though. One man tried to keep all the loot for himself, and the whole thing wound up as a mess of litigation for years. Ultimately, he ended up with nothing, on the run from the U.S. Marshals, and in hiding forevermore. Cursed treasure? Well, maybe it was just a dopey guy made mad by greed. That I'll leave up to you to decide. Number 8. The Bassano Vase this is a bit of a weird one because this is a story of a cursed object, a vase to be precise, and it's believed that anyone who owned it would suffer from the terrible curse that was placed upon it. The thing is, nobody knows exactly why it was cursed. Oh, and also, nobody knows where it is or if it even actually exists. The whole thing is kind of a myth in its own right. The stories of the cursed Pisano vase are what holds the whole mystery together, but there are no actual eyewitness accounts of the physical vase, only tales of its murderous powers. I told you it was a weird one. This alleged 15th century object was believed to have originally been crafted and given as a wedding gift, presumably to a delighted couple who were thrilled to receive a curse on their happy day. Anyways, the details then get pretty fuzzy to downright murky, and then they plunge into complete darkness. All we know is that it is a vase that may or may not have existed, and if it does, then it's cursed. The end. Number 7. The Titanic Curse all great tragedies will often attract notions of supernatural involvement as people try to find answers for things that defy explanation, like the sinking of the Titanic. A horrendous death toll in the worst maritime disaster ever had really upset people 
they were looking for explanations, so they looked to see if it could have been the result of a curse. One month after the disaster, the Washington Post led with a headline that suggested the whole thing was the result of an ancient Egyptian mummy's curse. The ransacking of Egyptian treasure was also a popular pursuit during this time, and it seems as though people were letting their imaginations run away from them. There were also some speculations about the survivors of the sinking, and that many of them met untimely ends or died in unusual circumstances. But this is all just the way that anything to do with the Titanic has been perpetually recycled and retold and juiced up to feed the tragedy-hungry public in the wake of the disaster, and in fact, through all time to this very day. Number 6. The Treasure of the Templars the Knights Templar have long been shrouded in mystery and secrets and the promise of hidden treasures. This order of soldiers was endorsed by the Catholic Church and sent out to do its bidding. Like many secret societies, they've been associated with lost treasures, secret codes, and many unsolved mysteries throughout the centuries since their prominence. But the legitimacy of these claims is generally unfounded. It's more often bolstered by fictional accounts that get people's heads in a spin with the promise of lots of lovely lost loot hidden somewhere. The thing is, though, the Catholic Church funded the Knights Templar, and frankly, that's one organization that knows how to hang on to its cash. Just saying. But if you do want to go looking for that lost treasure, by all means have a go at it. Maybe you're the lucky one after all. Number 5. Delhi Purple Sapphire a haunted gemstone that also goes by the name the Gem of Sorrow sounds like something you would really want to avoid, doesn't it? The story of this gloomy old rock goes that a British soldier stole the sapphire from the Temple of Indra in Kampur in India all the way back in 1857. You know, that time when Britain was doing unspeakable things in India in the name of the empire? Well anyway, this guy obviously didn't get the memo about never stealing haunted jewels from temples because those things are always cursed now, aren't they? However, he took it anyway, and boy did he pay the price. That guy returned to England and immediately began to suffer a series of financial misfortunes, eventually bringing his family to the point of collapse. Then he fell ill with a bunch of mysterious and debilitating diseases, as did his whole family. The stone then turned its curse on a family friend to whom he lent the stone, immediately after which that friend inexplicably committed suicide. So the moral of the story? Well, try not to commit atrocities in India, but at the very least, don't steal sapphires from the gods. Number 4. Otzi the Iceman whether this remarkable discovery is cursed or not is really a matter of opinion. But you know, wherever there's a mummy, there's someone with a notion that there is a curse. And for the most part, it's just been a find of extraordinary interest or understanding the history of humanity. Otzi the Iceman is a very well-preserved mummy that would be discovered in the Italian Alps in 1991. The mummified remains are estimated to be 5,300 years old and despite their age contain lots of lovely, exciting science-based information about how people may have lived during that time. The mummy has continued to attract the interest of scientists and the wider public ever since its discovery. He's been studied in great depth over that time and has relinquished secrets to those who have wanted to follow the clues. Number 3. Maori Warrior Masks The Maori people of New Zealand have a rich and fascinating history. Their culture of storytelling, artwork, and hunting is bound up in the handed down crafts of their ancestors. Carvings like these masks were made to represent ancestors or gods, and were not intended to be worn, but rather to adorn homes or mark places as a point of reverence. There is a long-held belief that if the maker of a mask were to die violently and their spirit could not reach Hawaii, then they may possess objects or people. The objects that they made were a most likely place for a spirit to take up residence. Number 2. Roman dagger finding led to discovery of lost battlefield. 
A metal detector enthusiast was poking about in a field in Switzerland when he happened across a fancy old Roman dagger. The dagger itself was decorated with inlaid silver and brass and was, by all accounts, kind of interesting. But most interesting, perhaps, was what archaeologists found when they arrived on the scene following the discovery. The team of archaeologists began to uncover hundreds of artifacts. They had found a lost battlefield from 2,000 years ago. This was where Roman legionnaires had fought against Eurasian warriors as the Roman Empire was seizing power across the whole region. The dagger, which had originally been unearthed, was likely dropped in the battle by a Roman legionary who may have died on this battlefield. So are there ghost battalions and haunted ancient weapons seeking revenge across the Alps? Probably not, but this whole area was a site of extensive fighting between the Alpine tribes, who became the Rations, and the invading Roman army, so maybe the digging up of a lost theater of war will reawaken the spirits. Number 1. The Johnsburg Treasure a keen vegetable gardener in Illinois popped out to his backyard to pick some broccoli for dinner and got rather more than he had bargained for. Does anyone know just what the protocol is when you find a bag stuffed with cash in your cabbage patch? It seems as though this sort of discovery could land you in hot water in many different and imaginative ways. Usually, a bag containing $150,000 in $20 bills isn't really completely legit. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are plenty of honest people out there who keep their savings in small denominations inside bags in other people's yards. It's the safest place after all. But this, well, it seemed like it probably spelled trouble for the gardener. It really is the beginning of a movie plot now, isn't it? After a certain amount of deliberation, he then decided to take the discovery to the local police station and let them figure out what to do next. Likely as not though, no one will come forward to declare that they've lost a big bag of cash. I mean, do they have all the receipts for that? Well, treasure that's been cursed is just a bit more exciting than the regular lost kind. A bit of supernatural weirdness definitely makes for a better story, doesn't it? Which of these stories stirred your imagination? And would you risk the curses to get a hold of the treasure? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.